Today on Riffs, Beards, and Gear, we talk about DI boxes. I'm always getting a lot of questions about reamp boxes versus DI boxes, do I need a DI box, so on and so forth. And recently I was asked by my friends over at Lyft AV if I wanted to check out some uh, new DI boxes and I thought this would be a pretty good opportunity to show you guys what a DI box is and if you need one. So let's get started. For this example today, we are going to be using these new guys from uh, KB Audio. This is the uh, JK-1 and this is the JK-A. This is a DI box specifically designed for acoustic guitars. And this is a highly optioned um, active DI box. Both of these are active and we will go over active and passive in just a minute. But first, let's talk about what a DI box is. Now for this specific scenario, we are going to talk about it in the context of being a guitar player. Now, the signal coming out of your guitar is a high impedance, unbalanced signal. What that means is over a long stretch of cable, you will have signal degradation and you will lose, start to lose high end and it just won't start sounding right if you have really long cable runs. Um, DI boxes were also originally made to convert line level signal or instrument level signal into mic level signal. When talking about audio, there are three different kinds of signal levels that you will hear often. First, we have line level. This is the loudest of the signals. And line level is what's coming out of your processor. And these are the kind of thing like rack mount units, things like that. Instrument level is lower. And that is the level of volume and signal that comes out of your guitar. Mic level is the lowest. And that is what is obviously coming out of a mic. Back in the day, uh, DI boxes were developed to plug a guitar into a mixing board and have the mixing board see mic level signal levels um, from things that didn't actually have uh, mic levels. So really it's, it's basically a conversion box is the best way to, to think about that. Now there are two types of DI boxes. There's passive and there's active. The difference between the two is active typically has a lot more options, needs phantom power and can uh, add gain to the signal, whereas a passive just passes it through, converts it, and then sends it on its way. When I say options with active DI boxes, a good example is the acoustic DI box that I have here has a notch, and you can adjust the frequency at which you notch your acoustic guitar for uh, cutting off some of the high end. Um, you don't typically see these kinds of things on uh, passive DI boxes, only active. So for us guitarists, here's why DI boxes matter. Think of this as a really pristine, clean Y cable for all intents and purposes. You're gonna plug your guitar into this and it's going to send a signal through the through that you can send to your amp and you can use the XLR to go into your interface and you can record the DI while listening to the amp that you wanna actually record or reamp later. Now, another cool thing with a DI box is if you have an interface, an entry level interface, now this one has pads, this is a Focusrite 2i4, but the 2i2 and the Personas Audio Box do not have input pads, so if you plug your guitar DI into it, you will peak and your DIs will be distorted because it's looking for mic level inputs. You can use a DI box to plug your guitar into and then from the DI box go into the interface and then you won't be clipping on your DIs. Pretty cool. You can find lots more information on the web but if you want to check out these particular DI boxes from KB Audio, you can go to liftav.com and uh, tell them Fluff sent you. Uh, they're very cool people and they're local here in the Northwest, so uh, I like them a lot. At any rate, hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And as always, I am Fluff, and I'll see you next time.